You're tuned into the heart-pounding, adrenaline-fueled world of G2GP, where the stakes are high and the wins are legendary. Strap in and hold tight, because the bets are in and the games are on. And now, here he is with this week's bangers, Charles Wallace. What's up, guys? Welcome to From Gridiron to Gold Post. I'm your host, Charles Wallace. This is the March Madness edition. As you see here, just cover March. They're just kids, so you can't get mad at them. And you can't, depending on your age. Like If you're in your 30s and 40s, you can't get mad at them. I'm in my 20s. I'm going to get mad at them, and I'm allowed to get mad at them because make your fucking free throws. You know, That's just my opinion on it. Would I make the free throws? I'm going to say, yeah, would I actually, I don't know, dude, I might get nervous, you know, a lot of people there, but, 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 but I'm on my couch. I'm allowed to get mad at them. They're on the court. They need to do what I need them to do. That's it. I can get mad at them close enough in age. You're 30 or 40. Why are you getting mad at them? He's a kid and you're cursing at the TV. Grow up. Me, I get mad. I curse at the TV at them. Like, you know, not just at the TV, like the TV's not off and I curse at it. But some kid from Auburn misses a free throw late. I'm like, dickhead, do your job. And you can't even say it's not their job anymore because the NIL, it is their job. Make your free throws. Unless I fade your team, then miss your free throws. But we have a ton to get into today. We're going to start with some futures on the tournament. Um, I couldn't get it to format properly, like to get the actual picture. You know, like how we have the picture in the corner or in this corner, this corner. It's hard. Everything's mirrored. Wherever we have the picture, it's just hard to format it with the futures and like all the text on the script. So I'm just going to say them. First one's an easy one. National champion, UConn plus 400. Don't overthink it, right? This is easy. They're the best team far and away. Don't overthink it. It's plus 400. Not the juiciest odds in the world, but you take it. Plus 400, you'll cash that ticket in a couple weeks. Next up, we have Michigan State going to the Sweet 16. It's coming in at plus 350. Uh, let me pull the bracket out here. I like the matchup with Mississippi State in round one. I think Mississippi State is a team that, I don't want to say they played above their head, but they I think they played above their head to get past Tennessee in the SEC tournament. Michigan State's been playing well below the level that they were expected to play at all year. I think they get by Mississippi State in round one, and then a matchup with North Carolina in round two awaits, and I think North Carolina is the weakest of the ones this year by a decent amount. I think that'll be a close game down the stretch. Um, I don't think either team is really capable of pulling away from each other, so I like the value on Michigan State to potentially win that game, get through to the Sweet 16. And if you take it, and let's say – North Carolina, Michigan State is close late, where Michigan State even has a little bit of a lead late. You can always, you know, at that under eight media timeout in the second half or even the under four media timeout, hedge on North Carolina to win the game. can always do that. Next up, kind of in a similar vein, TCU to make the Sweet 16 at plus 600. Um, I like them to get by Utah State. Obviously, I like them to get by Utah State in round one. And then... Purdue, another team that it's like a trendy thing, like to make fun of Purdue, especially after the uh, Fairleigh Dickinson debacle last year. But I just don't see it. Like every game they play against good competition tends to be down to the wire and close. You know, Michigan State almost got them in the Big Ten tournament. Wisconsin did get them in the Big Ten tournament. Um, so I think, again, value there on TCU to get by them and get through to the Sweet 16, it's plus 600, but I like the value on that. Uh, moving along, these ones will not be finished this weekend. These are two going into the next weekend. Gonzaga to the Elite Eight coming in at plus 450. I like Gonzaga to get by McNeese State. Now, McNeese State's going to be a trendy upset pick around the water cooler. Don't listen to those schmucks, okay? They're going to see 30 wins on McNeese. Good for them. Who did they play? They played me and my me and my buddies played them back in November non-conference. So I don't want to hear about it. Um, and we kept it within 22. That's all I'm saying. Me and my buddies had a few Coronas. We went out. We played McNeese State non-conference away. We were away. Okay. They, that was a home game for them. And we lost 
uh, 70 to 49. We kept it close. That's all I'm saying. They have not beat a team that's in the field. Okay. So I like Gonzaga to get by them. Kansas then uh, could away or Sanford. Now, Kansas has a ton. We're going to talk about Kansas and Sanford, the matchup uh, later on in the show, actually, because I have a pick for that game. Kansas is reeling right now. If they get by Sanford, I think the wheels are already falling off the wagon this year for Bill Self down there. I think they get by them. And then this ties into the fact that I like TCU as a good shout to get to the Sweet 16. Um, even if it's not TCU, even if it is Purdue, I still think Gonzaga has been playing really, really good basketball ever since the uh, ever since the turn of the calendar to the new year. I like Gonzaga to get by whoever they would face in the Sweet 16. I think that is probably my favorite bet of these futures is the Zags to well, besides UConn's going to win the national title. You know, we know that already. But I do like Gonzaga at plus 450 to the Elite Eight. And our final one is a bit of a longer shot, um, but we have St. Mary's to the final four at plus 1,100. Now, full disclosure, I don't even have St. Mary's winning their first round game against Grand Canyon. However, I will say, if they get by Grand Canyon, which they're favored to do, like I'm picking an upset in that matchup. If they get by Grand Canyon, they have Alabama next. I think they have a very good, with the way Grant, not Grant Canyon, with the way St. Mary's plays, it's very slow. It's very methodical. I think that can mess up uh, the Crimson Tide's rhythm. And then similar vein that these kind of tie into each other, a potential Sweet 16 matchup with Michigan State. I would definitely favor them in that one. And then I assume Arizona in the Elite Eight. And at that point, you could just go to a nice hedge on Arizona. Arizona will be favored probably by four and a half to five points in that game. Um, And at that point, you don't even need to take them. You don't take them on the spread because you can lose both, but you could just take Arizona on the money line there and put a decent chunk of change invested into that to make sure you cover all your bases. St. Mary's plus 1100 to the final four. It's worth a shout because I think the looking at the bracket here, I have the bracket in front of me. I'm not just looking down at nothing. I haven't filled, I filled my bracket in, but my bracket's already on the wall. Me and my family would put all the brackets on the wall. Um, I'm going to win the pool this year. I always do, except for the years I don't win it, which I have never won it. But that's not the point. The point is new year, new May, same thing. I'm going to win. Um, I like the West to be the most chaotic region. I think the East is going to be the most straightforward. You got UConn, you got Auburn, you got Illinois, you got Iowa State. You have four conference champions in one region i don't know how they came to that i think that's a crock of shit but whatever especially for uconn supposed to be the one one like and you put them in there with three other uh power conference champions i'm not sure how we came to that selection committee same way i'm not sure how we came to get in virginia even in the field but that's neither here nor there we got the bracket but i think we're going to see a lot of chalk in the east i think in the west we're going to see chaos i think in the south and Midwest, there's nothing stands out too much. I think you're going to see James Madison as a sexy pick. They're not going to win. Um, who else? Like I said, you'll see McNeil as a sexy pick. They're not going to win. You'll probably see – I'm just looking because I know how you degenerates think. Um, who else? You'll probably see either like Boise State or Colorado to beat Florida. That won't happen. I mean, it might, all this might happen, but like I'm saying, it's not going to happen. So you're supposed to trust me because you're the one watching the show. So that's kind of just my analysis of the bracket along with my futures bets. I'll run through them one more time here. UConn to win the Natty plus 400, Michigan State Sweet 16 plus 350, TCU Sweet 16 plus 600, Gonzaga Elite 8 plus 450, St. Mary's Final Four plus 1100. Um, There's five of them there. If we win two of them, any two of them, we win, we profit. If TCU gets to the Sweet 16, we profit no matter what. If St. Mary's gets to the Final Four, we profit no matter what. So those are the futures that we got on March Madness this year. And now let's get into what you're definitely here for, besides the bits and banter, the picks for the games. We're starting off with the first game of the tournament, the Curtain Jerker. Classic 8-9 matchup between underperforming power conference schools. I've talked about how I like Michigan State to get to the Sweet 16. I'm not taking them in this game 
On the side, I'm taking the under. Under 130 and a half comes in at minus 110. Both teams rank outside the top 200 in possession length, and they have the 20th and 8th ranked uh, defenses in adjusted defensive efficiency. Also factor in that this is the first game of the tournament, and I just see it being a rock fight, a disgusting game. Um, I think it's more in the in the low teens. Honestly, I think it's, you know, a game that first to 60 might win it. You know, we're talking maybe Michigan State takes it like 60-56, 60-57. So the high teens, I guess. But wouldn't shock me if it went in the low teens either. Wouldn't shock me if we saw like 59-55. Like, I think it's going to be a rock fight. I think it's going to be ugly. Under 130 and a half, minus 110. And then the second game. Now, just because these happen to be the first two games to tip, I don't have a pick for every game. Um, if you have a, like a question about a game that's not covered here and you want to ask it in the comments, I'll give my best possible answer. But these are the games that I like that I feel comfortable putting my name, putting my name behind here. So just because this is the second game of the day, don't think you're getting 32 picks here today. Unfortunately, you're not. But second game, Duquesne and BYU under 142 and a half coming in at minus 110. When this game opened, I loved BYU on the spread. It was minus seven. It's already shot up to nine and a half. I don't like it there. It's a tournament game. It's early in the day. Asking a team to win by 10 plus in a six versus 11 matchup that early in the day, you are asking quite a bit. Um, even though Duquesne's a banter 11, like that's disgusting that Duquesne's an 11 seed. What happened is the committee had already slotted VCU. Okay, VCU is going to win the A10 they'll be an 11 and Duquesne one, and they didn't have a contingency bracket. That's at least what I'm assuming, because there's no way that you actually gave Duquesne an 11, but that's neither here nor there. I like the under 142 and a half in this one at minus 110. Uh, both def defenses here are top 50 in efficiency. And I think the only chance for Duquesne is to take the air out of the ball. Outside of uh, Day Day Grant and Jimmy Clark, they don't have anybody who can score the ball. They're the only guys averaging double-digit scoring for them. So they need this game to be ugly if they're going to have a chance. I think they're going to really try to slow this game down, make it as few possessions as they possibly can to give themselves the best chance to steal it late. I like under 142.5 at minus 110. Moving along, Nevada coming in. Nevada minus one, not just coming in. Nev oh, Nevada coming in. Nevada minus one. Get it together. Minus 110. Dayton is only seven and seven away from home this year. Nevada, on the other hand, is 11 and four. They've scored 75 or more in seven straight games. I just don't think that the Flyers' defense is enough to combat this Nevada offense right now. Um, Dayton likes to shoot the three, they generate a large portion of their offense from three. Nevada is in the top 50 in three-point defense. So I think it's just a bad matchup for the Dayton Flyers, and they're heading home early. Give me Nevada minus one. Moving along, I said we would get back around to this game, and here we are. We got Samford plus eight coming in at minus 112. Kansas is six and eight away from home this year. They're dealing with injuries to Hunter Dickinson and Kevin McCuller. If they play, which I assume – they will give it a go, obviously. Uh, there's going to be some rust on these guys. I'm sorry. You're not just going to – they. you're not just going to pop in to March Madness like this after not playing for a couple of weeks and, and be fine. Um, they really looked bad in the Big 12 tournament, their only game. They lost by 20 to Cincinnati. That was without these guys, obviously. But even with these guys back, I think that Sanford is a dangerous team. For, for really anybody, but especially a team that's reeling. Um, I like Sanford plus eight at minus 112. I think they could pull the outright upset uh, if you want to sprinkle that, but I wouldn't go too heavy on them pulling the outright upset. I really like them to keep it within eight points at minus 112. Our last pick of Thursday. Oh, I lied. I'm a big sack of shit. Doesn't bother. And like, don't think like, oh, you're putting yourself down. Listen, doesn't bother me when my mother says it doesn't bother me when I say it. I'm a big sack of shit. I messed up. Okay. It happens. It's happened before. It will happen again. I am who I am. All right. Washington state plus two second to last pick a Thursday. And then we got a whole slate of Friday. Don't go anywhere. Washington state plus two at minus minus one ten. 
Drake is 5-9 and nine against the spread away from home. Washington State is a good team. I think they're underrated. They have two wins this year over Arizona, and they rank in the top 30 in defensive efficiency. I think that Drake, that's another team. That's going to be trendy. Everyone's Drake. Everyone's going to want Drake going, making a run in this tournament. Nada. Sorry. I write the script. They're heading out round one. Washington State plus two. They will win this game outright, probably. And if they lose by one, I'm like, oh, I was so close. And then made money anyway, so who cares? Final pick of Thursday. We got a parlay for you guys, you sick bastards. BYU money line, Gonzaga money line, something real simple for the kids. Minus 149. It's not sexy. It'll get the job done. Uh, BYU playing a bad Duquesne team. I'll take him on the money line as part of a parlay piece. Uh, McNeese State. Um not much to say. I've already talked about them. They're going to be a sexy pick. They're not going to beat Gonzaga. Nothing too, like I said, nothing too sexy here. Minus 149. It's not, you know, it's not paying for the kid's college fund. And I'm not paying for my kid's college fund either. I don't even know the guy. Minus 149 on the money line. It'll get the job done. Moving along to Friday. San Diego State, minus six and a half. Last year's national runners up. They will start off on the right foot here in their bid to get smacked around by UConn again later in the tournament. Minus six and a half. It comes in at minus 110. UAB's defense is outside the top 200 going against a very good San Diego State defense. Uh, They are top 10 nationally in defensive efficiency. I just don't see how UAB is going to score enough. It's not that San Diego State's like a juggernaut offensively. It's that... With the number of possessions that I see this game having, I don't see UAB scoring enough on this defense to keep it within six points. I don't see them keeping it within single digits. If you want to get freaky on a Friday, decent movie. Can maybe do a little 10 plus, you know, on San Diego State, get a little plus money. But then when they win by nine, don't cry to me. All right. You're a grown man or a grown woman. Let's be honest, though. If you're watching this deep into the show, you're a grown man. All right. The women pop in. They see the flow. They're like, I got it. You know, they maybe scream record a little bit of the intro to watch later and they get away. I'm not naive. I know how it goes. San Diego State minus six and a half, fellas. Maybe do a little 10 plus if you want to get cheeky. Next up, Clemson plus two comes in minus 110. Now, this is one where the geography of it is playing in. Um, They are playing this game in Memphis, Tennessee, I believe. And that's much closer to Clemson than it is to New Mexico. And also, Clemson is very good defensive rebounding. They're not going to give up a ton of second chance opportunities. And they are top 10 nationally in free throw percentage. They rank a full eight percentage points higher in free throw percentage than New Mexico does. A game where the spread is this close, even if New Mexico is up late in this game, I don't trust them going to the line, being able to close it out. I think Clemson could definitely win this game, but I also think that at plus two, the only way that it's really safe is if new, like if you're on New Mexico, the only way it's really safe is if you're up seven, eight points. You know, if you're up, even if you're up six points and there's, 12 seconds left. Oh, look, Clemson at a three. All right, you're fouled. You're going to the line for a one and one. You hit one out of two. Now you're up by four. They get a meaningless, meaningless three at the buzzer. Tail as old as time. You're sad. I'm glad. My missus is glad. Your missus is sad. And she doesn't even know about the bet. She's just your missus, so she's sad. My missus doesn't know about the bet. She's just my missus, so she's glad. That's just how it goes, right? Point is, take Clemson with the points in this one plus two minus 110. They might win it outright. If they didn't win it, if they don't win outright, I didn't say shit. If they do win it outright, I'm gonna repost this on my story and be like, see, told you so. Go fuck yourself. Next up, Vermont plus 12, coming in at minus 110. Now, this is a catamount's defense that excels versus the three, where Duke ranks 15th nationally in three point percentage, but they do that's very good, obviously, but Not a home game, right? We're not playing this in Cameron Indoor. Uh, Could take a little bit for them to get adjusted to the environment. You know, that's a real thing. Could take them a little bit to get adjusted. And even when they do, this is a Vermont team that defends the three pretty well. 
Also, I just don't like Jared McCain. All right. Always posting a TikTok, always painting his nails. You think the catamounts are painting their nails? They're not. You know why? Using their fingers to dribble the ball. You think they're posting TikToks? No, they're not. You know why? Using their phone to watch film. All right. I don't like guys who paint their nails. I don't like guys who post TikToks. And if you got a problem with that, you're probably not watching by now anyway, because I probably turned you off to this show months ago. If you're still here, you're probably like, yeah, hell yeah, fuck that guy. Paints his nails and makes TikToks. I'll take the other team. And then if Duke wins by 30, it's like, well, you faded a team because the guy paints his nails and makes TikToks. You get what you get. But if they don't, right, if Vermont covers, it's like, see, shouldn't have been painting his nails, making TikToks. It's a win-win for me. It's always a win-win because if I'm wrong, I can just pretend I didn't say anything. And if I'm right, I can just, you know, clip it and post it for the world to see. My genius. Two picks left. Grand Canyon plus five and a half coming in at minus 110. Like I said, I have them winning this game outright. Uh, Tyon Grant Foster, in my opinion, going to be the best guy on the court in this matchup with St. Mary's. They are an athletic team, Grand Canyon, like a very, they have the athleticism, in my opinion, of a high major team. This is not your typical 12 seed. This is not your typical mid major team. They uh, rank top 10 in defensive field goal percentage. When you factor that in with how St. Mary's wants to slow the game down, play it at a snail's pace, really, I think it's going to be hard for them to separate and get enough possessions to get past this number. Uh, and the number shouldn't even factor in, in my opinion, because I do have Grand Canyon winning. But I'm not always right. You know, I'm usually right, not always right, but I do think Grand Canyon takes this one. Just to be safe, we'll take them on the spread at plus five and a half. And we got one more parlay on Friday, and this one is a bit more up the degenerate alley. We got Texas A&M plus one and a half. Charleston, Alabama over 172 and a half and TCU money line coming in at plus 483. So that's 11 picks for you guys, two of them at plus money. And then just to tell you, just so I can scream, just so I can scream record this for myself and post it on my stories when it happens, the final four is UConn, Arizona, Houston, and Creighton, Connecticut over Houston in the natty. And for the final score prediction, 73-64, UConn over Houston in the Natty after UConn beats Arizona in the final four, Houston beats Creighton in the other final four matchup. I just told you the script. If you didn't want spoilers, sorry. We'll see you next week.